Here's a perfect example of what we're talking about. The people who are supposed to be helping you and they're wrapping themselves in all this virtuistic language, the DEI language, right? So just, just, just so you know, a nice illustration of this is that the CEO of UNICEF. Okay. Guess who the U CEO of UNICEF is married to? Who? The chairman of BlackRock. No. Larry, yes. Larry Fink? I don't know what his name is. I just know that the chairman of BlackRock. Not, not Blackstone or Lab. Okay. Um UNICEF, oh, yeah. the CEO of UNICEF, married to the chairman of BlackRock. So that that kind of like that wraps it all up in a nutshell, doesn't it? That's the perfect example of what you're talking about here is these uh, virtual Larry Fink. Larry, Larry Fink. Fink. Yeah. OK, what who, who's his wife? Look up who his wife okay. is. And if she's the uh, if she is the CEO of I'm UNICEF, sure, I'm sure they meet they meet her wife because she's really good at fundraising. And um, Larry Fink probably gave UNICEF a lot of money and. Rich people love to go to galas and wear ball gowns and raise a lot of money. And UNICEF Lori has Fink. a lot of prestige. What's her name? Lori Fink. Oh, she took his name? <laughs> she took his name, Lori <laughs> Fink. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> so it's it just right. feels like, it feels like you're like a crazy person when you see the, make these connections that call you a conspiracy theorist. But it's all out there. It's like, it's not the fucking X-Files. You know, you don't need to go to, Ohio to look at genetically engineered bees or something. It's all out there. <laughs> no one is giving a, there's no the systematic way. There's no politician that's making these connections and sort of making a political organization as you wanted Cornell West to do to say, you know, here's, here's what's happening and here's what should not be happening. You know, here's, charity being you know, taken over by one of the biggest one of the wealthiest men in the world and they're supposed to be rescuing children and it's just a pr proliferation of inequality and childhood suffering so that i can look good by giving money giving my wife this position so that she can give money to it and it's not it's actually not rocket science but why is it so hard for people to wrap their heads around well what is this famous critical because they're in the world? because they're bombarded by propaganda and they think they're good when they turn on MSNBC, CNN and Fox News, when they pick up the New York Times and the Washington Post, they don't realize that those are propaganda rags that are funded and ri written by people who are funded by the billionaire class. They don't realize that they're actually reading is is propaganda and they're not reading news, which is why they all think that another country is responsible for what happened. Russia is responsible for Donald Trump becoming president instead of the exact managerial class and the exact establishment that made people so desperate to vote for him so they get so they're easily propagandized right now they think that the people who protested the election on 2020 who showed up on january 6th that the they think they're all crazy criminals who want to steal their democracy instead of what they actually are are just people who are pissed off at the same system that the other half of the country has been pissed off for for the last first four years so that that right now people really think that those like cornell west came on my show another another example of his idiocy you like them more than yourself what, yeah, what, yeah, and so <laughs> and so when I pointed out to him, nice so he, guy. He's, nice he guy. said that what made Donald Trump a fascist and what made Joe Biden not a fascist, I, uh, he said that Donald Trump tried to overthrow the peaceful transfer of power on January mm -hmm. 6th. Well, yeah, if he used the military to do that, that would be true, but he didn't. And those were just peace, pissed off protesters, and there were a bunch of Second Amendment gun nuts who showed yep. up to overthrow the government and son of a bitch, they forgot their guns. They weren't there to overthrow the government. They were there to protest an election and they got pushed into the Capitol by the FBI plants because this was all set up. It would, That's why there weren't cops there. That's why the National Guard wasn't there. That's why the cops gave them tours. Now that we're saying that's what this was all about. This was about criminalizing a political movement that actually was going to go against the establishment and stand up against them. Just like they criminalized the truckers in Canada. You remember they called them Nazis, they called them violent, and then just a few months later, the whole parliament in Canada is literally saluting a literal Nazi <laughs> over no. the Ukraine war. And so let me just co correct no. the, the BlackRock UNICEF thing. Uh, Catherine oh. Russell is the UNICEF woman, and Thomas Donlin is the chairman of BlackRock. Fink is the CEO. So, oh, okay. so that's okay. the... So, oh, nice. 
Okay, yes. so that's yes. that's yes. so that's how. And I just want to remind people: this is what you say in your book. We must be heretics. We should blaspheme, and that's what I've been doing <laughs> at this show ever since 2015 when we started it. And that's what's gotten me uh, uh, hit pieces in New York Magazine and Newsweek. That's what's gotten people make re- make videos about me on the regular. People with MSNBC contracts make at least a video about me a week because they get their money from this exact establishment that I'm pushing back against and that's what your book is talking about that's what thomas frank talked about once you realize that you've been betrayed by the by the quote-unquote left which is the democrats and the republicans because they serve the exact same billionaire class people read the washington post and they think they're getting the truth about donald trump the washington posters are owned by the richest guy in the world do you think you're getting the truth about anything from the guy who bought a newspaper he bought that newspaper because he wanted to give you the truth or because he needed to propagandize people into not burning down his house when they when he stole all your money and he took away your job rights and he took away your union he's fighting unions he's not helping you get unions you got to stand yeah. up against these people so that's what that's the problem in america is that people have been propagandized and they don't know they're propagandized americans are the most propagandized people in the entire world you know in the old soviet union when people would read pravda where they would get the news from their the, from the government they know it was garbage. They knew they didn't have to trust it. In China, they know they're being propagandized. In America, they think Rachel Maddow is telling them the truth because she's a lesbian and gay people are virtuous by their nature and they would never lie or do the bidding of the military industrial complex. It's the exact opposite. They hire people like Chris Hayes. They hire people like Rachel Maddow so they can trick you into thinking that they're telling you the truth. A nerd wouldn't lie to you. A gay person wouldn't lie to you. Well, that's exactly where they get hired hired so that you wouldn't think they were lying to you. And that's exactly what's happening. And that's why people don't know whether to shit or wind their watch now. They don't know what to do. And then a guy like <laughs> Cornell West comes along and he repeats the same goddamn language as the people that they're trying to fight against. And he tells you that your enemy is your neighbor. Your enemy is the white supremacists who vote for Donald Trump. Your enemy is not Donald Trump voters. Your enemy is the people who made people desperate enough to vote for Donald Trump in the first place. I'll, I'll, so, I'll, so th- those people who watch CNN and, and MSNBC, they are part of the PMC. They're propagandized. Most people and young people, because I have young, I have listened, they are completely apolitical. They're not watching the news. They're just not informed. They're demobilized. So it's about like demobilizing the great majority of people who see everything as not as you know not working for their interests. It's The most propagandized people, and this is what I write about in the book, too, are actually the professional managerial classes. They're the most deluded class. And it's like when I went when I knocked on doors for Bernie in like a a working class neighborhood in California, you know, it was both like it was really upsetting. I'm not a good door knocker, but I remember one (laughs) woman said to me, you know what? Nobody cares about us. Doesn't matter if we vote. And I was like, you know what? You're right. <laughs> like if she's actually speaking, like I'm there, like little PMC, you know, like, hey, you know, it's the primaries, blah, blah, blah. This was in 2016, not 2020, right? I, although I walked for him in 2022. And then I walked away from there and I was like, kind of angry at her, like kind of upset. Like if Bernie had won, you know, she her situation would be much better. But I was like, wow, you know what? She's that is her truth. She feels completely abandoned by politics itself, right? And I thought, you know, for someone like Bernie could like pierce that veil somehow. We needed someone like that to actually speak to people who feel like they've completely been abandoned. But to me, the great majority of Americans don't watch the news, they don't read the news, they feel just totally left behind. Uh you are correct by that, and that's the, the that's why this show is popular because uh, people feel even if they disagree with my political remedies for their problems, they appreciate that I'm not lying to them, I'm not bullshitting them, and that I'm not demonizing them and pretending that my neighbor is the problem, that another worker is the problem. Workers aren't the problem. Blue collar people aren't the problem. Uh, the people who voted for Donald Trump are not your enemy. They're the people who are feeling the same pain from the same garbage economic system that Bill Clinton and Ronald Reagan ushered in and Barack Obama propped up and Joe Biden is ramming 
jamming down our throats. Uh, they're they're also victims, and uh, that nobody knows which way to turn. And so they every four years they go from Republican to Democrat, Democrat to Republican, because there's mm-hmm. nobody out there speaking for them. And that's mm-hmm. why it was so. Uh, you know, I had such high hopes for uh, RFK Jr. because he kind of had he he felt that he felt that we needed freedom of speech. He felt he saw the uh, uh, he he saw the economic class taking over and screwing people. Unfortunately, his Middle East policy is so screwed up that he can't attract enough voters to win. We're working on that, and we're trying to get his, him to uh, wake up to that. But I have to, <coughs> Catherine. I have to run because we have another guest coming on, and so I just want to say, do you have any closing words you'd like to say? No, no. Thank you for having me on. I think uh, we had a great conversation. Thanks for giving me the space to talk about these things. You know. I don't know why you hate women and feminists, but I appreciate you coming on. <laughs> why are you a white supremacist? Why are you a white supremacist? It's so crazy. <laughs> Catherine Liu, everybody check out her book. There it is, Virtue Hoarders, uh, The Case Against the Pre- Professional Managerial Class. Everybody should pick that up. In fact, we should do a book club about it. I think we might do that. Uh, it's fantastic. That's Maybe a great we'll- point about separate, atomizing people from each other. That's what the, the managerial class, they're getting subjected to that. Like animals and proles are free. Like 1984, all my buddies don't know anything about, about politics whatsoever. Yeah. And everybody right. else believes uh, Rachel Maddow. I, I know. Yeah. Right, 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 right. And then you're like trying to lecture people in the working class like, hey, you should really read New York Times. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, you know what? No one cares about me. I'm like, yeah, that's true. That's true. That's why I'm the worst door knocker in the world. So, Jimmy, if you ever run for uh, anything, have me do something else, but. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> I'm also. <laughs> I'm also not a good door knocker. I wasn't either. I had to quit doing that. Yeah, I, I would be like, "Hey, I can see your point." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm Catherine Lou, thank you for coming okay. on. I ho- we're going to have you back on many times. I'm sure. Thanks for making time for thanks us. So much. Thanks and thanks for writing the book. Life. We're doing live comedy shows in Oxnard, California, Venice, California, Palmdale, California, Omaha, Nebraska, Des Moines, Milwaukee, Lansing, Michigan, Bend, Oregon, Portland, Oregon, Seattle, Washington, and Boston. Plus, we're going to put a date in Edmonton, Canada, plus Vancouver. See ya. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for all those tickets. Mm-hmm.